which within your which values, and uh, and that's fascinating to observe from the outside. Uh, our next, uh, I'll, 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 ask, I'll allow some question. If there are any question, immediate question. Now I'll try to aim to uh, sp uh, sp uh, a period of question answers uh, at the end of the session. But if there is any quick question now to the speaker, uh, we'll take one. How far? How far did you go ahead from the days of Sarkozy? What are you achieving, except? You mean in terms of the UFM? Yeah. Because uh, just to contextualize maybe the, the question, there was the... Yes. In, in uh, 2008, so uh, 10 years ago, uh, the Union for the Mediterranean was, uh, was born. Uh, it was pretty much a, a driven by the desire by the French president to get a nice uh, picture uh, in front of the Elysee Palace. If you, the, the funny thing is that if you look for this picture on the web, it is very difficult to find. Uh, maybe because of the sort of, of people that were surrounding Sarkozy at the time. Uh, the UFM has established itself uh, as a, mainly as a forum with, with two main objectives, uh, 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 projects for the benefit of the, uh, uh, of the whole region, so regional uh, projects, and then a forum for policy, a, a policy dialogue. The question is to what extent there will be room to extend that, that mandate in, in the future because now you have, in addition to the Secretary uh, General in Barcelona, you have a, a, a team of 43 ambassadors. It is called the Senior Officials Meeting. Whatever comes out of this sum is like Euromed Bible. So it's like a, a, the voice of the Euromed community. So the question is to what extent there is a, 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 it would be useful to use that for other things that only projects in the future. I know the prerequisites to do this at, at the time are not there yet, but I think this is something we need to have. Um, a member by association? No, no, no. It's only, it's purely a, 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 a union of Mediterranean uh, countries. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Emmanuel Navon, also a graduate of uh, Science Po. My congratulations, and a PhD from international relations from uh, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Universita Ivrit. Uh, Dr. Navon is a lecturer in international relations, Tel Aviv University, and the uh, Herzliya Interdisciplinary Center, Amerkaza Ben Trumi. And that's recommendation enough. <laughs> Go ahead. I'd like to stand, speak from here. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Uzi, and good afternoon. So, uh, you know, your job is pretty easy today because my name is also Emmanuel and I also went to Sciences Po, so I just have to repeat the same presentation over and over again. Um, the, uh, the late uh, President Bush, uh, who passed away uh, recently, used to uh, dismiss what he called the vision thing. And he didn't need, he didn't need a vision thing to successfully handle the end of the Cold War and to build an international coalition against Iraq. And I guess the same could be said about the architecture thing. I don't know what's a Mediterranean architecture, uh, but I do know that Nicolas Sarkozy's Union for the Mediterranean, which we just mentioned, has been basically a flop and that the so-called Barcelona process has only produced hot air. And what is needed to defend Israel's interest in the East Mediterranean is neither a vision or an architecture, but I would say a clear assessment of the region's changing dynamics. Now, Israel's relations with the uh, countries of the Eastern Mediterranean have gone through profound changes. We used to have an alliance with Turkey, and no relations with Greece. Today, we have an alliance with Greece, and our relations with Turkey are on the rocks. Even though I read a few minutes ago that our Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said that our relations with Turkey have improved dramatically in the past few days, because it used to be that Erdogan would call Netanyahu a Nazi every uh, two days, and he says now he only does it every six days. So 
is, there is an improvement. Now, it's important to understand why, in order to explain, uh, in order, you know, it's important to understand why we've uh, shifted alliances in the East Mediterranean in order to uh, understand Israel's foreign policy uh, in the coming uh, years. Now, as we know, Turkey and Greece are historical rivals, but when Israel became independent in 948, uh, it had more support from Turkey than from uh, Greece. Greece, by the way, was the only European country that voted at the UN against the uh, partition plan in 1947, and for 42 years, it refused to uh, recognize Israel de jure and to uh, establish full diplomatic uh, relations. One reason for that was that there was a, a very big uh, Greek diaspora in Egypt and that uh, President Nasser at the time uh, threatened the uh, Greeks that if they would recognize Israel, he would, um, you know, he would take uh, possession of all the uh, property of the Greek community uh, in Egypt. Now, eventually, the Egyptians did confiscate most of the assets of the Greek diaspora anyway, so Greece theoretically could have recognized Israel, but then it didn't happen because of the, of the uh, Cyprus issue. Uh, when Cyprus became independent in 1960, uh, Greece lobbied for support at the uh, UN, and uh, therefore it was under the pressure of the uh, Arab and Muslim states that were more eager, of course, to support Turkey uh, being a Muslim uh, country. And of course, uh, there were many downs and very few ups in that relationship, especially uh, during the uh, Lebanon War in 1982, when uh, the Greek Prime Minister uh, at the time, uh, Papandreou made those comments comparing Israel uh, to Nazi Germany, etc. And at the time of Papandreou, the PLO's so-called embassy in Athens uh, was um, its strongest international uh, foothold. And, sh and things started changing uh, with the end of uh, with the electoral defeat of Papandreou in 1990 and the uh, establishment of a centre-right government. Full diplomatic relations with Israel uh, were established. Uh, uh, in the early 90s and um, in recent years. The relations between Greece and Israel have warmed considerably. Uh, in, 19, in 2010, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu became the first Israeli uh, prime minister uh, to visit Greece, and the uh, Israeli and Greek air forces started their first uh, joint military exercises uh, in September 2011, Israel and Greece signed a security uh, cooperation agreement, and Israel now uses the Greek airspace for training uh, purposes. Uh, with Turkey, uh, relations with Israel, uh, with Israel have evolved the other way around. Um, with Turkey, uh, we had this uh, relationship already uh, in the 50s because uh, with the pro-Soviet coup in Iraq and the political union between Egypt and Syria, in 1958, Turkey's regional standing was uh, weakened and threatened, and it provided an incentive for uh, Turkey's rapprochement uh, with Israel uh, because of Turkey's conflict with uh, Syria. And because Turkey was threatened by uh, Soviet expansionism and Arab nationalism, it was interested in upgrading its ties with Israel, and as a matter of fact, the Mossad established at the end of 1958 a triangular intelligence agency with Turkey and Iran. Um, the highest intelligence officers in Israel and Iran and Turkey uh, met twice a year and shared information on the Soviet Union and on the uh, Arab states. And uh, in addition, the uh, Iranian revolution of 1979 added a common enemy between Israel and uh, Turkey, because for Turkey, it's, uh, what was at the time its secular state model was threatened by the expansionist uh, Islamic Republic uh, of Iran. And again, also uh, the conflict between Turkey and Syria was one of the reasons for uh, the close uh, ties between Turkey and Israel uh, at the time. Um, but those relations uh, with Turkey uh, also eventually uh, soured. With, uh, it started when uh, Erdogan's uh, party uh, Justice and uh, Development won the election in 2002. Uh, one of the first uh, 
changes, major changes in Erdogan's foreign policy was to refuse the uh, request from the United States to use Turkey to attack Iraq uh, from the north, uh, even though Turkey is a NATO member. And overnight, if you remember, uh, Erdogan became a hero uh, in the Muslim uh, world. Uh, but then again, it's not only because of that. It's also because Israel became less important to Turkey uh, with the end of the Cold War, the end of the Soviet threat, as a Turkish diplomat admitted candidly to an Israeli audience at the time, quote, we don't need you anymore, there's no more USSR and no more Arab subversion. And by the way, Erdogan even jailed uh, most of the intelligence officers who had upgraded relations with Israel in the 1990s when Israel and Turkey signed a military cooperation uh, agreement in 1996. Now, a turning point in Israel's relation with Turkey and Greece was the year 2010, uh, because the Mavi Marmar incident, I would say, sealed the divorce that had been brewing for years between Turkey and Israel. But this divorce occurred right after the revelation of Israel's huge natural gas resources and after the bankruptcy of the Greek economy following the 2008 financial uh, crisis. And this created a de facto common interest between Israel and Turkey, but also with Cyprus, with, which, as we know, uh, also has huge natural gas uh, resources uh, and also has, of course, a conflictual relationship uh, with uh, Turkey. Uh, now, as we know, there is this uh, pipeline project between Israel uh, uh, and the EU that was agreed upon recently, which also involves uh, Turkey, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Greece and uh, Cyprus, uh, just uh, last month, uh, in November. The three countries, I mean, uh, Israel together with Cyprus, Greece and Italy, signed a memorandum of an understanding to build what is meant to become the, the world's longest natural gas pipeline, which clearly shows that Israel has chosen the uh, Greek option over the Turkish option. Now, Turkey, of course, is opposed to the Israel-Cyprus-Greece partnership in natural gas, but it has not been able to stop it. Uh, Turkey tries to reduce its uh, independence on Russia, um, but it has been bypassed by the uh, israel cyprus and Greece uh, project together with Italy. And this is a blow to Turkey because Turkey, as I said, is highly dependent on Russia uh, for its import of natural gas. Turkey imports about 99% of its natural gas resources, 60% of which comes uh, from Russia, and half of uh, uh, Turkey's electricity is produced out of natural gas. Now, Israel, Greece, and Cyprus all benefit from this natural gas partnership. Israel acquires a stronger leverage and strategic value vis-a-vis -vis the uh, European Union by becoming a natural gas exporter. Greece uh, is acquiring the status of an energy hub, and Cyprus gains regional and international importance. Now, Israel, Greece, and Cyprus are also increasing military cooperation. So, in the East Mediterranean, Israel's regional partnership has shifted from Turkey to Greece. And natural gas plays a key role in the shift of alliances. Now, I'm not going to go into details on the issue of energy, because this is going to be the topic of the next panel. But I do want to mention one last point in the uh, emerging partnership between Israel, Cyprus, Greece, and Italy. This emerging energy hub has many enemies. Uh, whose ability to disrupt the pipeline project should not be taken lightly. Uh, Turkey uh, opposes it for obvious uh, reasons, but as we saw, there's actually little it can do to block the uh, project. But most serious obstacles are likely to come from within the EU. I spoke last month at a conference in Madrid about the new opportunities created by Israel's natural gas resources. It happened that my talk was a couple of days after the announcement of the memorandum signed between Israel, Cyprus, Greece, and Italy on the pipeline project. Now, critics of that project call it the pipeline, the pipe dream, sorry, the pipe dream. And at the conference in, um, 
in Madrid, there was a, uh, a Spanish energy expert who said it's not a pipe dream, it's a pipe nightmare. And he made three points. A, he said, I don't want my tax money to subsidize this, uh, this project. Uh, the EU, by the way, is supposed to put some money into this, uh, this pipeline. B, I don't want this new uh, energy hub in the East uh, Mediterranean because it would compete with Spain, because Spain happens to be, have the EU's highest capacity of LNG, liquefied natural gas regasification. And C, who needs natural gas anyway, since the EU will eventually rely entirely on renewables? Now, you can imagine that I did argue with him, uh, especially on the third point. But the point here is that Spain sees this, sees this uh, emerging partnership in the Eastern Mediterranean as a potential competitor. And it is therefore uh, probably uh, going to lobby Brussels against the project of the pipeline between Israel and uh, Italy. Uh, and Spain is certainly going to lobby against putting EU money into a project which it doesn't want in the first place. So the project should not be taken for granted. Uh, Israel, in my opinion, made the right choice by going for the Greek option. Uh, but it will have to fight hard to make sure that the pipeline project and uh, the new geopolitical architecture in the East uh, Mediterranean become a reality. And last point, just to show that Israel is really uh, putting effort in uh, trying to lobby support within the EU and uh, among European countries for this project, is that the Italian uh, deputy premier and, um, uh, and interior minister uh, uh, Matteo uh, Salvini is in Israel today, and there's a meaning to it. Uh, it's not only that Israel is very much enjoying itself using the very European tactic of divide and rule within the European Union uh, to promote its own interest and break the uh, Brussels consensus, and Israel has been doing this very uh, successfully, but also uh, in order to make sure that this project, which would have a huge potential for the Israeli economy and regional power, would have enough support uh, in, uh, in Europe. So I'll leave it here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.